Did you ever wonder why something feels a little bit off about your Unreal Engine renders? Like why it just doesn't quite look like something that you would shoot on an actual camera or why it just doesn't quite look like something that you would see in a Hollywood production? This was something that I struggled with for a long time as a filmmaker using Unreal for VFX and virtual production. I was using highly detailed textures, really good quality meshes, my lighting looked great, but something was still just a little bit off with my scenes. So after studying this topic for a while and lots of experimentation, I came across one of the simple tricks that you can use that can help take your Unreal Engine renders from looking good to looking real. So if you feel like something has been holding you back, this could be it. So let's dive into Unreal and get started. All right guys, so hopping into Unreal Engine here, the first trick that we're going to cover is very, very simple. And we can do this either inside of Unreal Engine or inside of whatever editing program you're using. So I'm going to show you an Unreal first, and then we're going to hop into DaVinci and I'll show you a really quick way to do it there. We have our scene here and you can see this is a really, really large scene, right? So this is where a lot of those issues of trying to make your scene look realistic come into play. And you can see that we've got a ton of detail in here and that's really good and that's what we want when we're inside of Unreal. We want this to be very, very detailed. The problem is Unreal Engine is a 3D rendering software. And so when you render these things, they end up looking a little bit too sharp. If you look at any footage captured on a real camera, you're gonna notice that almost no lens is perfectly 100% sharp. What we can do in Unreal to fix that is we can actually change our focus plane slightly so that it's a little bit defocused. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to go into Lightforge 2.0. You obviously don't need Lightforge 2.0 to mess with these settings, but if you don't have it, I do highly recommend it because it's going to make your filmmaking workflow in Unreal a lot faster. If we go down to our camera settings and we just select our camera right here, we can turn on draw debug focus plane and you can see that I have my focus plane set right here at the front corner of this building. Now what I can do is actually even pull this a little bit further back towards us. And if I turn off my focus plane, you're going to see that everything goes a little bit softer in my scene. So if I set this to a perfectly sharp focus, you can see that we have, you know, everything is looking really, really clear and sharp. So if we just pull this focus plane just a little bit back from that corner, we're going to lose just a little bit of that sharpness. Now, by doing this, you're actually going to change the depth of field in your scene. So you're going to see that everything that's really far away is going to actually going to become more blurry than everything up close. And so that's why this can be not the greatest solution to this problem. It's actually better typically if you apply this slight blur in post-production. So we're going to quickly hop into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how to do that. All right, guys, so hopping into DaVinci Resolve here, I have my rendered clip and I rendered this as an EXR sequence for maximum color control and I'm using the ACES pipeline for color. I'm going to apply a LUT from the Lightforge LUTs collection. So I'm going to hit Alt S on the keyboard to add a new node. And this is just so that we can kind of see what we're doing here. So I'm going to apply that that you can see matches the LUT that we had applied inside of Unreal Engine perfectly. We're just going to simply apply a lens blur effect. You could also use like a Gaussian blur, but uh, lens blur is going to be a little bit higher quality. So you can see that's what we're getting. The lens blur effect is actually going to give you real bokeh. So it's not really necessary for something like this, but I like to get the highest quality possible. So I'm going to use that. For our blur size, we can just bring this down. You can always mess with these things here. So like if you wanted to, we could turn up because this is like, you know, technically shot on like an anamorphic lens. We could bring this anamorphism down and that's going to actually give you that anamorphic bokeh in the background if you're doing something like that but for our case we're not really going to worry about that so i'm going to leave my anamorphism at one and i'm going to bring my blur level down to like 1.63 or so and if you take a look here if we turn that off and then back on you can see that there's definitely a significant difference here so just adding that little bit of blur is just going to smooth that out to the point where it's going to be a lot more realistic to what an actual camera would be photographing and that's kind of really the key importance here inside of when we're rendering from unreal engine is simulating what would happen on a real camera so the last thing that we can do is just add some film grain here it really depends on the look that you're going for. In a lot of cases, there is gonna be some level of grain regardless of what you're shooting on. Some digital cameras at this point are able to capture images with pretty much no grain. So it, it's really up to your decision-making on this. If you're trying to emulate film, you're gonna to wanna to add some of that grain and mess with some of these settings here. You might wanna go 35 millimeter. 
something like that. And the same concept would apply in After Effects or other programs. You're typically gonna use the camera lens blur effect. So the point of this video is that you don't necessarily have to do anything crazy or tricky to enhance the realism of your scene. Sometimes it's as simple as just tweaking a small setting like this and it can make all the difference in your renders. So hopping back into Unreal Engine, I just wanna give you guys a couple more tips here for making really realistic looking scenes. So the first one is going to be actually using real photographed assets in your scene. So what I'm talking about here is using fog cards, for example, that were actually photographed or using stock footage that is placed on a fog card plane, or in this case, using lighting effects that were actually captured on real camera. So you can see right here, we have these water caustic effects, and those were generated using Lightforge 2.0. You don't need to use Lightforge 2.0, and we're gonna be coming out with a tutorial on how to create these nice caustic patterns manually, but I will say that using Lightforge 2.0 is going to drastically speed up that process. So all we have to do is go down here to our Gobo section section in Lightforge. We're going to click on choose media file. We're going to go into the included motion gobo pack that comes with Lightforge 2.0 and we can just choose one of the looping motion gobo textures. It's going to automatically create a media texture for us and then we can actually choose an existing light in our scene like this spotlight 6 for example. We're going to choose that go back into our camera. And then if we hit apply to existing light, it's actually going to create that looping water caustic texture on that light for us and we're all good to go. So using real photographic assets like this in your scene is going to drastically enhance the realism of your shot because you're actually mixing these digital elements with real photographed assets. So like I said, that could be anything from using stock footage like smoke or fog cards on media planes to using HDRI textures, which we're also going to be doing a video about soon, to using real photographed textures applied to your lights to apply that light breakup and get really interesting looks in your scene. The last thing that I want to cover here as a tip to really improving your scene quality in Unreal Engine is to actually light your scene with a LUT applied to your footage. And let me show you what I mean. So if I go into Lightforge, once again, you don't need Lightforge 2.0 to do this but it makes it a lot easier to demonstrate. So if I click on my post-process volume here, you can see that we have a LUT applied and these LUTs come with Lightforge 2.0. So if I turn that LUT off, you're gonna see that we have a really, really flat looking scene. And if you're looking at this as your result, what you might end up doing is increasing the contrast on your actual lighting to make it look more contrasty in the engine. The problem is when you actually apply a color grade, you're gonna be then increasing that level of contrast even more. So what I recommend is creating a LUT or a look profile in your color grading software, and then creating a matching LUT that works inside of Unreal Engine, and then applying that LUT to your footage while you're working inside of Unreal, so that you can actually see what the final look is going to be, and you're not just guessing on what your color grade is gonna look like. So we're also gonna be releasing a YouTube video on how to create LUTs inside of Unreal and how to use them, but in the meantime, I wanted to get that quick tip out to you guys so that you can start using it in your scenes. Now, if you want some extra guidance on rendering, I've put together the ultimate rendering guide for you guys which is a free booklet that I've included in the description of this video that's going to help you navigate the tricks and trade-offs of rendering with Unreal Engine using both Lumen and Path Tracing, including console variables for any rendering scenario, how to fix common lighting bugs and errors, how to reduce render crashes, and some secrets that are going to help take your renders to the next level. As I said before, I also highly recommend checking out our Lightforge 2.0 plugin for Unreal. I use it on all my scenes because it gives me full cinematic control of my scene from one central console and it allows me to create high quality, intricate lighting and color grading in just a few clicks so I can focus on getting those cinematic shots instead of the technical jargon of Unreal Engine. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for that product as well. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Did this help you? If it did, be sure to click the subscribe button and like this video to make sure you get notified of future videos we release. We've got lots coming in the future, so you definitely don't wanna miss out. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.